understand that the napkin was neatly folded and placed at the head of that stony coffin. Why would God waste that much time in scripture just to let us know that the napkin was not thrown away with the rest of the grave clothes? Look at somebody say the folded napkin, the folded, folded napkin. Well, in order to understand the significance of the folded napkin, you have to understand a little bit about Jewish tradition of the day. The folded napkin had to do with the master and the servant. Every Jewish boy knew this tradition. When uh, the master of the house, the father or the master of the house, uh, would come in and uh, usually the firstborn son would, ser would set the dinner table for the master and he made sure that it was exactly the way the master wanted it. The table was furnished perfectly and then the servant would wait just out of sight until the master finished eating and then they would go and take care of the table. They would not dare touch the table until the master was finished. Now if the master were done eating, he would get up from the table, he would wipe his fingers, his mouth, clean his beard, and then he would wad up the napkin and toss it on the table. And the servant would then know to clear the table, for in those days the wadded up napkin meant I'm done. But if the master got up from the table and folded the napkin mm -hmm, and laid it aside his plate, the servant would not dare touch the table because the servant knew that the folded napkin meant I'm not finished yet. I'm coming back to the table. Now that was your cutest shout right there. <laughs> Oh, bless the name of the Lord. You see, Peter and John had walked with Christ for three years. They had watched as he opened blinded eyes and deaf ears. They watched as he literally raised people from the dead. Then they watched him die. And as they watched, all of their hopes, all of their dreams were shattered. All they could think was, it's over. It's over. And for three long days, they were in the depths of despair. The lights of their soul had grown dim. Peter even said, I'm going fishing. I'm going back to doing what I was doing before Jesus showed up. How many of us do that when it seemed like things aren't going our way? Come on, y'all. Lord, as long as you're blessing me, I'm on fire. I wish I had somebody in here. But then when things don't go our way, we say, I'm going back to fishing. I'm going back to the club. Uh, somebody, somebody say, Pastor, get out of my living room. But then after three days, they saw an empty tomb. Not only did they see an empty tomb, but they saw a folded napkin in that empty tomb. And I believe with all my heart that when they saw the folded napkin that God spoke to them in their being and said, he's not finished yet. He's coming back. Don't cry. Dry your eyes. He's not dead. And I thank God today that he's not finished yet. Oh yeah, the tomb is empty, but the Savior is alive and the napkin is still folded. Jesus descended into the depths where the enemy was and snatched from him the keys to hell and death. And that's good news because some of us find ourselves in deep, dark places and wonder, will God get me out of here? I'm caught in an addiction and I can't break loose. I'm stuck in a pit and I can't get out. I'm trapped in a snare that will not let me go. I'm bound by chains that are difficult to loose. Oh, it's good to know that Jesus will go to the very depths of darkness and get you out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll go there and set you free. Break the chains that hold you. Rebuke the demon 
demon that's holding you. Destroy the yoke that's choking you. And here we are on Resurrection Sunday and Jesus has all the power in his hands. The grave can't hold him. Satan can't defeat him. Sin doesn't win. Jesus shows himself to his disciples. He appears to Mary who first thinks that he's a gardener. Jesus reveals himself and she recognizes him and calls him Rabboni. And he tells her to go tell the disciples that she has seen the Lord. And that evening as his disciples are hiding in a room with the door locked. A symbol in fear. He appears in their midst and says to them, peace be unto you. Jesus demonstrates that he's able to conquer fear. He did it before when the storms of life were raging. He's able to say, peace to the storm. And now in the midst of the most critical time in the life of the disciples, he steps into the situation and says, peace be unto you. I just want to tell somebody today who's going through something in your life. Jesus is speaking that very same word to you today. He's saying, peace be unto you. I don't know what you're going through, but Jesus knows just how much you can bear. He knows your every weakness. He knows your every sorrow. He knows your trials and tribulations. And I'm here to tell you that whatever you're going through, he's able to step into your situation and say, peace unto you. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. When it seemed like the weight of the world is on your shoulder. Oh, bless his name. When it seems like the bounds of Springfield are at your door. When it seems like the darts of the wicked one are thrown in your direction. When it seems like you are at your most vulnerable point. When it looks like you will never win. Jesus steps right into your circumstance and conquers all the forces that are working to bring you down. With one word and he says to you, peace. Well, let me close here by just telling somebody you don't have to worry because the napkin is still folded. And I know I'm taking too long. Some of you have ham baking. Yeah, and the turkey cooking and the duck simmering and the stew's boiling. Or that spam is waiting in the can. I got to close so you can get home. Oh, bless his name. But Easter is all about the folded napkin. In other words, God is not finished yet. Oh, that ought to make somebody shout. He hasn't stopped speaking. He hasn't stopped blessing. He hasn't stopped lifting up my head. He, he left an assurance in the form of a napkin. Letting us know that the current condition that you're in, that you don't have to stay in that condition. Oh, you ought to testify to somebody sitting next to you and say, you don't have to stay in the condition that you're in. There is a way out. Oh, yeah, yeah. What he started, he wants to finish in your life. Oh, bless his name. I want you to know that he that has begun a good work in you, he will finish it. You ought to touch somebody and tell him he's not finished with you. Oh, Lord, have mercy. He's not finished saving souls. He's not finished trading sorrow for joy. He's not finished giving peace that pass all understanding. He's not finished making a way out of no way. He's not finished loving you. He's not finished loving me. He's not finished healing the sick. He's not finished delivering the captives. He's not finished mending the broken hearts. Oh, bless his name. He's not finished breaking that alcoholic addiction. He's not finished breaking that drug addiction. He's not finished delivering from pornography. He's not finished opening doors that no man can close. He's not finished bringing our hope for tomorrow. He came that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. And although we may not see him right now, I want you to know today that he's not finished.
finished. There is a folded napkin in your life. And the folded napkin says, 